you as well. Back to you. All right, that is what we can expect from Reliance Geo this time around. Rima, th thanks a lot for that. But let's now shift gears to the auto space. KTM, which operates in partnership with Bajaj Auto in India, has rolled out its millionth bike. My colleague Parikshit is in conversation with the CEO of Bajaj Auto, Mr. Rajiv Bajaj. So let's cut across to that conversation. Yes, uh, Bajaj Auto and KTM have launched the one millionth KTM from Bajaj Auto's chalk and plant where we are currently. Both companies have pledged that the next one million will come much faster. With us right now is the Managing Director of Bajaj Auto, Rajiv Bajaj. Rajiv Bajaj, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Give you. us a sense of how important has this partnership been for Bajaj Auto for where it is today. Thank you, Parikshit. Yeah, it's a great day for us. Uh, you know, we started with KTM in 2007, so it's been 16 years. Uh, my mind goes back to what KTM was then and where Bajaj was then. KTM was a company that made about uh, 65,000 motorcycles a year. Um, and I think now they are uh, closing in on 400,000 motorcycles a year. Uh, and a very large uh, proportion of that have come out of this partnership, which means designed, developed, made and sold out of India. Uh, so that's how big uh, this partnership has been for KTM. KTM has gone on, uh, I would say, uh, to a large measure on the uh, you know, virtue of this partnership to now become not just um, the largest motorcycle maker in Europe uh, in the premium segment, uh, but the uh, number one premium motorcycle maker in the world. You know? mm -hmm. So I think Stefan and team would agree that this partnership has been pivotal mm -hmm. Um, uh, to building this success. From our point of view, uh, you know, the, uh, the simple fact is that how many uh, motorcycles did Bajaj sell in 2007 in the premium space, whether in India or globally? You know, the answer is zero. Uh, you know, uh, and now over 16 years, it's uh, one million motorcycles in the KTM brand, apart from whatever we do ourselves with Dominar, etc. So I think for both companies, it's been tremendous. And uh, if you look at uh, uh, the other partnerships that it has motivated between other Indian makers and uh, other global makers, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery. So I think uh, uh, it's been well acknowledged. Right. Uh, I would now like to ask you about the future of the partnership going forward. How many more products or what are the kind of products that we will see uh, through KTM, through Husqvarna in India this year in the premium play? in bigger bikes, in electric mobility? Well, actually, you've kind of answered the question. Uh, I'm obviously not at liberty to uh, say anything very specific. But A, uh, for sure, in the next, over the next two to three years, the entire current lineup uh, of uh, the KTMs here, that is the Duke, the RC, the Adventure, uh, will all be very significantly uh, upgraded. Uh, so there's lots of new stuff that's uh, on the drawing board or in development right now. Uh, secondly, as uh, Stefan elaborated earlier today, uh, he is open to the idea of bringing bigger KTMs to, to this market and from this market to other markets in the world. So I think uh, that looks uh, very likely in the near term, I would say. Uh, Husqvarna, as the second important brand in the stable, is uh, already here. Of course, it is uh, several years behind KTM uh, in the Indian market, so it is still taking time to build. Uh, but I have seen the new Husqvarna's and uh, they are absolutely beautiful. In fact, if I may say so, uh, I, I like them more than I like the KTMs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's something I'm looking forward to. Uh, recently, as you are aware, KTM has been involved with Gas Gas, has acquired Gas Gas and is now uh, you know, involved uh, with MV, MV Agusta. So there are no specific plans right now for uh, these two brands as far as uh, Bajaj KTM is concerned. But who knows, you know, I mean, uh, uh, this is all available to us and therefore to our customers. Finally, on electric mobility, uh, it's no secret that we are working together mm -hmm. to develop uh, electric power trains for the future. So, uh, really, we are working uh, on, on all those aspects that you mentioned. Right. Uh, we spoke to uh, Stefan Pierre a short while back. He pointed out that this year, at least the second half, could be challenging because of the possibility of a mild recession in Europe. Exports for you have also seen a dip and that's probably bringing down sales because of the global headwinds. How do you think uh, this calendar year, the upcoming fiscal, is going to be for you? Okay. So on exports, yes. Uh, let me put some numbers on that. Uh, 
you know, exports is about half of uh, our business, so very significant for us. Uh, typically, we were at uh, 200,000 vehicles a month, motorcycles and three-wheelers put together. Uh, in recent months, it's more like 140,000. Uh, so, you know, uh, we are down about 30 percent, you could say. Um, and it's not just us, that's uh, across industry. Um, if I may add a detail to that, we are particularly affected uh, because two of our biggest markets, Nigeria for motorcycles uh, and Egypt for three-wheelers, uh, are hugely impacted. Uh, Nigeria is down more than half, and Egypt uh, for the moment is not permitting uh, mm. the import of three-wheelers. Mm. So, therefore, that's taken a big hit. Having said that, if you look at the last quarter, uh, that is the second quarter for which results were already declared in October, I think we recorded our highest revenues mm. and our highest bottom line ever, uh, if I'm not wrong. So we have managed to uh, you know, compensate for this in other overseas markets and also out of the domestic market. Now, obviously, to sitting here today, I'm not at liberty to comment on the third quarter results, uh, but I'm very hopeful uh, that, of course, every quarter cannot be a record quarter, but I'm very hopeful that uh, due to a combination of things in our control and some outside of our control, um, uh, you know, we will continue to uh, put out uh, some pretty good performance. Uh, you know, when I say outside our control, just to finish this answer, I mean that, uh, you know, the Forex has played a very important role, obviously, uh, in our bottom line. So sometimes I tell our people that, uh, uh, the the uh, performance of Bajaj Auto depends less on its MD and more on uh, the RBI governor. Okay. All right, that is the word coming in from the Bajaj Auto Management talking about the partnership that they have with uh, KTM. Also on the expos, they're saying, of course, you know, they are seeing some kind of global headwinds and that pressure continues. It's down around 30% in terms of exports, but he is hopeful that things will pick up going forward and in Q3 as well. But with that, we are going to get into a short break now. You guys stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to bring you excerpts from our conversation with Telecom Minister Ashwini 